All right, Shalom Israel, first and foremost, as always, I would like to give all praises, honor, glory, respect, and the blessings to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachaha, Kodash. Salutations to the Lord's elect on the four quarters of the earth, pushing his truth and sincerity while patiently waiting for Yahweh Shai's return. <clears throat> And double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai. Okay, and um, this is going to be a response video. Okay, um, you know, I kind of want to go into this video that came out some uh some some months or or some time you know some months or, or or some time back okay can't necessarily give you the exact month or when the video came out but okay there was a video that came out that was done by the isupk by their leader who called himself or uh, who who um named himself General Yohanna Now in this video that General Yohanna did he made a statement basically saying you think God cares if you put a micro C hip in your body and you know I wanted to further expound upon that because um, clearly it is evident that the Most High does care if you put a micro C hip in your body. Because one thing about these false Israelite groups is um, one thing they like to do is is um, they like to discredit the fact that the mark of the beast is the CHIP you know and they'll try to make us out to look crazy and you know they'll try to belittle the chip like like it ain't all that bad and you know well, your phone got it your card got it your shoes got it your clothes got it okay but there's a difference between a chip being in a phone or in a in, in, in a non-living object and a chip being inside of an actual person. There's a big difference between that. Okay. And you see these Edomites trying to put uh, uh, micro C hips in, in people as basically the so-called elites trying to gain and have control over the Lord's creation. And that's really what it boils down to. Especially the Lord's number one creation on this planet, which are the Israelites, which will be the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native Indians that are likened unto that being the apple of the Lord's eye. Okay, as it is written, he that touch of you touch of the apple of of the, the eye of the most high okay so as the israelites we are a very special people unto the lord okay and we're not just known as a very special people to the lord we're also known as the lord's woman as you will read right here in jeremiah 6 and 2 i have likened the daughter of zion now, when it says the daughter of Zion, this is talking about the nation of Israel. Okay. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. Okay. So we as a nation of people are likened to a comely and delicate woman. Okay. 
And when a female reaches, okay, uh, a certain age, she's either espoused or married off to a man. And when she's married off to a man, you know, she she's basically, you know, with that man for the rest of her life unless he dies. And then, you know, like the Bible says, you know, she she's she's free from from the law of her law of her husband. But we all know, you know, well, well what do the Bible say concerning the Lord? Did not the most I say that he lived forever? Okay. So we belong to the Lord. Okay. The Israelites, which are likened unto a calmly and delicate woman, they are they they belong to the Lord. Okay. And what did Paul say? Okay, let let um, I'm gonna see if I can find it. Come on, man. Okay, let's see what Paul said. In uh, 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, okay? For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Yahweh Shai. Okay, now, what happens when a woman starts dealing with any other man outside of her very first man? That makes her an adulterer. Okay. Now, when a man first have sex with a woman that is a virgin and, and he breaks that hymen, he breaks that wall on her vagina, right? And the blood goes sprinkling out. That the, the sprinkling of that blood, you know, pretty much certifies that that woman was a virgin okay now when 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 israel's cherry first got popped this is going all the way back to mount sinai okay after moses went up on a mountain to mount sinai to go speak with the lord and um, basically, the Lord gave Moses, you know, the uh, the commandments, right? Of course, after Moses came back down from Mount Sinai, you know, Israel was was caught up in their folly and you know and all that stuff. But the point that I'm getting to is that, you know, after Moses came back down from the mountain with the commandments. You know, basically, Israel, with their mouth, had sweared and made an oath to keep and to do all of the Lord's ways, okay? To, to keep and to do all of the Lord's law, statutes, and commandments, okay? And after Israel has swore with their mouth and made an oath to, you know, to, to keep and to do all of the Lord's law, statutes, and commandments, right? Then what happened? Moses took, took the blood and, and he sprinkled it upon the altar. So Moses sprinkling the blood upon the altar, you know, of course it was literal, but on a spiritual sense, that blood being sprinkled upon the altar was basically Israel's cherry getting popped right there. At that very moment, you know, after Israel don't made an oath and, and swore with their mouth, right? And after the sprinkling of the blood, 
that pretty much constituted what? The marriage, which what is marriage? Marriage is sex. Okay, Mar marriage is sex. And when a woman first get penetrated for the first time and that blood goes sprinkling everywhere, okay? That, that pretty much constitute the marriage. You know, she, she's been penetrated, which means the very first man that she's been penetrated by, that is the man that she is pretty much stuck with for the rest of her life, okay? So, you know, Israel on, on a spiritual level, was was uh, penetrated by the Lord after Moses sprinkled that blood on the altar after Israel don't, don't made an oath with their mouth, right? So that means that we belong to the Lord as a nation of people. You see, you know, and, and not to mention when 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 a man have sex with a woman, you know, that is a virgin. That, that's a covenant being formed right there between that man and that woman in which a covenant is a binding a, 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 a covenant is an agreement a binding a, a, a binding agreement that binds you know two together so you know after the sprinkling of that blood upon the altar by Moses that first that first covenant was made So, you think God cares if you put a micro C hip in your body? Well, we know what the scriptures say, right? Let's go to Proverbs, the sixth chapter. Because we belong to the Lord, right? So, If Israelites are going around worshiping other gods, keeping the customs of the other nations, that means that Israel has committed spiritual adultery. Israel has committed spiritual adultery because, uh, yeah, she's uh, diving into the philosophies of other nations, which the philosophies of the other nations, the customs of the other nations, those are likened to other men. Okay. So when Israel, you know, when you see Israelites calling themselves Muslims, you know, they're calling themselves Hindu, they're calling themselves Kemet, You know, you got Israelites that are, uh, you know, calling themselves Buddhists. Uh, or, you know, a more or whatever, whatever ideology, philosophy, whatever customs they're into. You know, they're basically committing spiritual adultery. You know, even if you call yourself a Christian, because we're not Christians, you know, that term Christian was a derogatory term that was put, put upon us by the Romans, basically mocking us for being followers of, of Yahweh whom they have crucified. So, okay. Let's go to Proverbs real quick. Chapter six, verse 28. Can one go upon hot coals and his feet be not burned? Okay, uh, in a matter of fact, let's see. Proverbs six, verse, let me see. You know what? Yeah. Proverbs chapter six, verse 27. It says, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet be not burned? Okay, and his feet not be burned. Okay, 
So he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her, shall not be innocent. Okay, so that just goes to show you that um, Esau is not going to be innocent. Now, I'm not saying that the Edomites are neighbors of the Lord. No, by no means. But what I'm saying is that, like the Bible says, he that touches you touched the apple of, of the Lord's eye. So Esau is going to put sea hips and, 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 uh, and um, the majority of our people, the two thirds, right? That's why the two thirds are going to be marked for death. But guess what? Esau is not going to be innocent because it, he, he caused our people to go off, putting all this pork and, you know, all, all of these wicked things in front of our people to dive into so they can not accuse us to the father. So the Edomites are not are not innocent. Neither are the heathens. Because, again, we belong to the Lord, man. When I say we, I'm talking about the Israelites, the whole nation of Israel. OK. So it says. Uh, it says men do not despise a thief. If he's still to satisfy his soul when he is hungry, meaning when he is starving. OK, it's not talking about like the type of hungry that niggas go through on this side. You know, a, a nigga go seven hours without eating. Bro, I'm hungry. Nah, nah, nigga, you, you ain't hungry. You just feel like eating because that's a part of the lust of the flesh. OK. It's not that you're hungry. OK. When you're starving, that's different. That's like, you know, going three days without eating, you know. So back in the ancient world, you know, a man might have went three, three days without eating. So he resorted to stealing fruit or, you know, he might have saw one of his Israelite brothers that had a farmland, you know, plenty of corn, probably had some grapes laying around somewhere, uh, you know, plucking them up from off the ground and eating it just to stay alive. OK. So, I mean, yeah, and, and, and most in some cases, a man would not despise a thief if he found out the thief was was just, you know, taking food without permission because he was starving. OK, it says. But uh, but if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. OK, but whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. OK. It says a wound and a dishonor shall he get and his reproach shall not be wiped away. Why? For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. OK, so did you read that? It tells you that jealousy is the rage of a man. OK, how many men have died before in the past in America alone? just because he might have found his best friend having sex with his woman. You know, how many men have ended up completely mind broken, depressed, sad, crying through? Okay. You know, the drinking alcohol probably ended up losing his job because he was too depressed to come to work all over, you know, finding his woman with another man. It don't even have to be somebody, you know, it could just, you know, you could just be at work, you know, working to to provide for your family. Right. And then you come home and, and tch, bruh, some some nigga you don't know, you know, walking around in your home with, with, with some with, 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 with some white hang hang draws on in your refrigerator, just finished just don't finish popping your woman. 
And here it is, your woman is in bed waiting for him to come back and shit. You know? That's why, um, like Yahawashai said, okay, in the, uh, the book of Matthew, he said, uh, a wicked and adulterous generation looking for a sign. And indeed, this is indeed a wicked and adulterous generation. Okay? So, you know, jealousy is the rage of a man. A man's first instinct when he see another guy in bed with his woman, his first instinct is to kill him. Okay? No, which, um, that's why that video that Apostle Gabar did, not to get off, not to get too off topic, but Apostle Gabar, he did a beautiful video called, um, you know, the last thing you should be looking for is a wife. Okay? The last thing you should be looking for is a woman. Because I'm just going to tell you right now, there's really no such thing as a loyal woman. I mean, there might be, but your chances of finding that, especially here in America, is 1%. And more than likely, if she is loyal to you, she is not an Israelite. Okay? She is not an Israelite. Okay? Because heathen women are more loyal to their men than an Israelite woman is. You know? And let me remind you that in the book of Sirach, I believe the 25th chapter, it tells you that all wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. So adultery is a very, very light thing for a woman to commit. Adultery is a very light thing, oh, uh, you know. And 95% um, of the women that commit adultery, they have no regrets. Neither do they have any sympathy or empathy. They don't care about what they did to their man. Okay? So, you know, it would be a bad idea to, you know, go and look for a woman, especially in this society. You know, it's better just to wait, man. Wait for hell to break loose. Because when that happens, that's when women are going to fall in line. Okay? But, um, you know, I'm going to read it again. Proverbs 6, verse 34. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in a day of vengeance. So, you think God cares? If you put a, a micro C hip in your body, hell yeah, he cares. Because guess what? If you're an Israelite and you take that device, as it is written, you're gonna provoke the Lord to jealousy. <laughs> as a matter of fact, because um, remember how 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 was that covenant made? Between our nation and the Lord, that covenant was made through the sprinkling of the blood upon the altar and the oath that Israel made to, has sworn by their mouth when Moses came down from uh, Mount Sinai, okay?
Okay, so a part of that covenant is what? We are to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, right? Now, we're not going to be saved on keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, okay? Especially in this generation, we're not going to be saved on keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, but we keep the laws, the statutes, and the commandments, which we can keep to the best of our ability to show our obedience and our reverence and, uh, you know, our, our love and faith and fear towards Yahweh Bahashon Yahweh Shai, which is what? A part of our works. Our works spoken of in 2nd Esdras, the ninth chapter. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by faith and by his works, whereby ye have believed. So the keeping of the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability, which is rehearsing the righteous acts, is a part of the works. But that's not what's going to get us salvation. Lord's will, if we're of the elect, because we, we hope to be of the elect, right? We hope to be of the elect. So, okay. So, you provoke the Lord to jealousy when, when you don't keep his ways. And let's see what's a part of the Lord's commandments. If we go to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. What do it say? Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Okay? So, this right here is a commandment. This is a commandment. The Lord said that we are not to uh, make any cuttings in our flesh. This is a commandment that we all can keep. Okay? And this also proves that you're not supposed to get tattoos. Well, well wait a minute, Ark. Right. Well, 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 what if I get the chip tattooed on my skin? Well, you're, you're tempting the Lord. Which, that's also in, uh, I believe that's in within the first uh, 10 commandments. Ye shall not tempt the Lord thy power. Okay? Because the Lord, he, he'll still destroy your ass. No, 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 wait, Lord, don't, 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 don't zap me. I, I only got the chip tattooed on my skin. Nah, the Lord is still, he'll still beat your black ass to powder, okay? So, yeah, well, 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 we're not playing around, okay? Do not, do, do not tempt the Lord, man. Ain't, 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 ain't nobody gonna be able to pull a fast one on the most high, Okay? I mean, we're talking about Yahweh, the most smartest being in the entire universe. You ain't, you ain't, you're not outsmarting the most. I ain't nobody outsmarting the most high. But, um, so it says you should not make any cuttings in your flesh. So in order to get a micro C hip in you, right? And, and, and let's not get stupid. You got some motherfuckers out there. Well, well, well what if I take it in a? Well, what if I take it in 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 in, in a uh, pill form? So what? They gonna scan your your stomach looking for a chip? And guess what? That still don't change the fact that you still got the chip in your body. But again, the reason why the Edomites want the chip in either your hand or in your forehead because those are the two places where your body generates the most heat. So how do you think they're gonna get a C-hip inside of your right hand or in your forehead? Well, if somebody's getting a chip in their brain, when they have to, you know, make, cut, cut a hole into your, 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 uh, wouldn't they have to cut a hole into your skull? Okay. Which is, you know, when you go to Revelation 13, verse 16, and he calls of all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a, a, a mark, right? Now, when you go into that word mark, it literally goes back to the Greek word karagma. 
charagma, okay? Which means what? An incision to pick upon. Okay? An insertion. And when you inserting something, you're taking something and you're putting it inside of something else. So, there were karagma there literally means to cut into. But, um, you know, it says right here in Leviticus 19 and 28, ye shall make no cuttings in thy flesh. Okay, so when you let somebody put a micro C hip in you, what you did was, was you, you committed spiritual adultery. Okay, and we all know that adultery, according to Leviticus, the 20th chapter, is a sin unto death. It is a sin you cannot repent from, okay? Now, there are exceptions, such as King David, but there can only be one King David, okay? <laughs> okay? King David is a, a, a very special man unto the Lord. Okay? King David is a, a, a very special man unto the Lord. So, you know, but um, when you go to um, the book of, I believe it's Deuteronomy, the Lord gave you instructions as to how to deal with Israelites who talked about, you know, wanting to, you know, Go and worship other gods and idols, which neither you or your fathers have learned. Okay, because back in the ancient world, when it when you heard of uh, uh, when you heard of Israelites conspiring to go inquire or to worship the, the gods of the other nations round about them, you know you're supposed to do an a, a, a investigation and you know bring some witnesses with you, right? Under two or three witnesses, may may everything be established. And if the thing be true, or if the thing if the thing be found out to be true, you're supposed to put those 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 niggas to death. Because they was basically uh, uh they were basically telling you, you know, let, let, let's go forsake the Lord and worship our God. So you you were supposed to put those niggas to death. You know. I mean, and you see what happens when you don't put niggas to death for conspiring to go to go to worship the other gods and, and to keep keep their customs. You see what happens when you don't put their ass to death. Just look at the book. Just look at First Maccabees, the first chapter. What happened to those? Well, what happened when those group of men, you know, basically said, "Come and, and let us worship other gods." What happened 
uh, 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 no. What happened when, when those men basically said, you know, uh, uh, come and let us go uh, uh, keep uh, do the way of the heathens? For since, since we departed from thence, they have had much sorrow. What happened when those men were not put to death right away? Wickedness spread it like a plague all through all throughout all throughout the land. You know? And right before you know it, you had entire kids up 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 in there and shit. Having Israelites sacrifice a, a swine in the temple, having orgies in the temple. There's all manner of abominations. Can't have people eating pork. Now, could you imagine what would have happened if those niggas were put to death in the book of 1 Maccabees for, for, for conspiring to, to go and, uh, you know, keep do, do the ordinances of the heathen? Because you should know what it means to do the ordinances of the heathen. Whenever you keep the customs of the heathen nations, you're basically required to worship their gods. You worship the gods of the other nations by keeping their customs. Okay? By keeping their customs and their beliefs. So, even then in the book of Maccabees, you had Israelites conspiring to leave off the ways of the Most High and, and to do the ordinances of the heathen. And to do the ordinances of the heathen is to worship their gods. Okay? So, <laughs> you know, we ended up having to deal with Antiochus. We ended up losing our temple, you know? And then even more wicked practices were, were, in, were, were introduced into Jerusalem, okay? You had this ungodly wretch named Jason who basically introduced, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, wearing of hats, okay? Okay, they had a they had a a, a place where you where um, men could basically exercise naked, which is where you get the word gymnos from. The word gymnos literally means naked. Okay, so there was a place of exercise where men could work out naked in the Holy Land. Gymnos. So guess what? What General Johanna said, that's no different than, than what those niggas said in the book of 1 Maccabees, the first chapter. You know, Johanna is basically telling, hey, look, why don't we go and, you know, do after the ordinances of the heathen round about us. But since we departed, we've had much sorrow. You know, he, he, these are the same men coming back in their lot. They don't want you to believe that the RFID chip is, is the MOTV because they want you to do after the ordinances of the heathen. Doing what? Provoking the Lord to jealousy. Because when you when when, when you're an Israelite and you're you're keeping the customs of the other nations, you're committing spiritual adultery. And we know what the scriptures say about spiritual adultery. Okay? Jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in a day of vengeance. So you think God cares if he puts a micro CHIP inside of you? Yeah, he do care. He, he gonna care enough to leave your ass there and melt you by the intense, extremely hot heat of thermal nuclear bombs going off when they, when America gets stoned with 200 million nuclear warheads. The Lord's gonna leave your ass down here and melt you. 
And that's not according to my words. That's written in the Bible. All you have to do is read Revelation 14, verse 9 to 10. It tells you what the judgment is for taking the micro C-H-I-P, which is the mark of the B-E-A-S-T. Okay. And when you read all throughout the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, it would tell you, it would tell you about how, how Israel would move the Lord to jealousy with what? With their idols. Now, the micro CHIP, that's an idol within itself because it lets you buy, it lets you sell, It has your, it, it'll have your medical history on it, your, your finances, everything you bought and paid for, you know? you be able to track your location, your family location if they got it. So that, that damn thing is the idol too. You know? And then when you go into the root word of karagma, the root word there is Korox or Korox, which is what? A palisade. Now, when you look at the, um, the tool that is being used to administer that device the size of a grain of rice, that needle is literally in the shape of a palisade. Hence, that's what Korox mean. Korox means, you know, a, a palisade or something that is sharp that is used to, to, to penetrate or pierce into the earth. Now, our bodies do come from the earth, right? So why would they not use a palisade to, pal to penetrate through your skin, to, to, to put that device inside of you? You know, and branding, branding has always been around, okay? The government putting a micro C-hip inside you, that's no more than digital branding. Okay? It, that's no more than digital branding. Okay, branding goes all the way back to, into ancient Egypt when they used to brand their slaves. The only difference was that they would uh, use like a, 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 a hot iron and they'd basically stick it on you. And basically what it would do was it would leave a permanent mark. Okay, that way, you know, if another slave owner within Egypt found you, all they had to do was look at the area where your branding was at and they'll be able to identify what slave you belong to. Okay. So branding goes way back. Okay. Even when we were in captivity under the Greeks. Okay. I think it was Antiochus who came up with the idea of uh, putting a, a, a of putting a wooden stake into their slaves. 
and that wooden stake would basically indicate that you you belong to to Esau. And I believe that was under Antiochus the fourth. Okay, he would put like a a, a sharp stake underneath his uh uh the uh, underneath the uh the the skin of, of uh, certain Israelites to uh, identify who they are. Okay, so Karax, you know, you know Karax goes into you know the tool that's going to be used to to administer the CHIP, which really that goes back to a all. When I say all, I mean all as in I believe it's. A A U L or it could be spelt A W L, but uh, all was um you know let's go to it real quick. Okay, she, she. okay, okay, for this year. through and then hit search okay so let's go to Exodus 21 and I'll start at maybe 4 okay Exodus chapter 21 verse 5 it says and if the servant shall plainly say I love my master my wife and my children I will not go out free then his master shall bring him unto the judges he shall uh, also bring him to the door okay post of his master uh, uh, of his man okay and he shall bring him into the door post and his master shall bore his ear through with an all and he shall serve him forever meaning for the rest of his life You see, so this needle, you know, that they're using to administer the CHIP, right? That needle is your modern day all. Okay. All right, because uh. Yeah, the hole, the hole in, in your ear basically signified that you belong to a master and that you was, to, you was to serve that master forever, for the rest of your life. Okay. Okay, so the so-called elites, they have read and understood this. So they intend on making Israelites perpetual slaves by what? Boring through their skin, rather if it's in their right hand or in their forehead, boring through their skin with, 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 with an all to administer the CHIP. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, and if you have that CHIP inside you, you're basically gonna be a perpetual slave to the so-called elites. Okay? Because in 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 uh in um taking that CHIP, you accepted the so-called elites as your God. And you basically you you vow to worship them and to keep their ways. And we all know that the so-called elites, according to the Bible, they are known as the wicked. So, they're gonna be cruel to those who have the RFID C hip, okay? And pretty much, if you have the RFID C hip inside you, 
they can make you do whatever they want you to do. What you gonna do? You gonna say no? Well, they'll just, they'll just turn off your chip and you'll be axed out from, from, from off the grid, okay? You won't exist in society anymore. And if you don't, if, if you're off the grid, then guess what? How are you gonna eat? You ain't gonna be able to go to the store. Okay? Okay? You ain't gonna be able to go to the store. You ain't gonna be able to buy food. And starvation is one hell of a way to go out. You know, that's, that's a very painful way to go out. So you see, this is what they want. They've already weaponized food, air, water. Why do you think uh, Monsanto is buying up all the farmland? Why do you think they're putting all these farmers out of commission? Why do you think they're going after all these farmers? Why do you think they're going after people who, who are basically growing their own crops? Because they don't want people to grow their own crops. They don't want people to grow their own food. The so-called elites want the government to have control of all the food. That way, in order for you to buy or sell, you know, you have to go to them for it. You gotta go to their stores to buy and sell. And guess what? The only way to buy or sell from their stores and, and, and the beast system to come, okay? In order to buy and sell in their stores, you're gonna have to have, you're gonna have, to have the micro C hit. So if you're an Israelite, who are you gonna put your dependency on? Are you really gonna continue to listen to, to um, Johanna and all of these false Israelite groups that are, that are not telling you the truth as to what the MOTV is? Are you gonna to continue to listen to them? Or are you gonna seek the Lord while he may be found? Because at the end of the day, we know how the Lord's elect are gonna eat. We know how the Lord's elect are gonna eat. The Lord said that his servants shall eat, but who shall be hungry? Anybody who's not of the elect. If you're of the two thirds, you're gonna be out here starving to death. Literally, if you don't commit cannibalism. Because that's another thing that's coming back in the US. Cannibalism, okay? You know? So it's, it's gonna get horrific out here, man. It's going to get horrific out here. That's a lot. I'm about to get ready to the street here. You know? So, you think God cares if you put a micro C hip in your body? Yeah, he do care. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Let's go to Revelation real quick. Let's read the judgment for those who take the uh, micro C hip. Revelation 14 verse 9. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark, in his forehead or in his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out with a mixture to the cup of his indignation. And what is the wrath of the heavenly father, which is poured out with a mixture? The wrath there is talking about those intercontinental ballistic missiles, which can carry up to, you know, hundreds of nuclear warheads, okay? 
because according to biblical prophecy, America or the United States of America, which is also known as Babylon the Great, okay, during uh, World War III, which is going to escalate into a nuclear war, okay, America, which is Babylon the Great, is going to be hit with uh, 200 million nuclear warheads. Okay. Okay. So that's the wine of the wrath, which is poured out without mixture. When Russia, China, North Korea, NATO, India, Iran, when they all shoot their intercontinental uh, uh, ballistic nuclear warheads on this country, this country is going to be destroyed. So, um, yeah, I mean, let's continue reading. I'll finish this out. You know me, I have to work today. But um, it says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh. Right. Now, notice how it says, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, right? It said, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Now, remember what I read earlier in Proverbs, the sixth chapter, about jealousy being the rage of a man? If you were Israelite and you take that, that uh, C-H-I-P, you're gonna feel the wrath of the Lord because you, you have moved them to jealousy by committing spiritual adultery. Because as an Israelite, you have been espoused to one man, and that's Yahweh. Okay? Well, I mean, well, that's Yahweh Shai. Okay? That's that's Yahweh Shai. Okay? We have been espoused to Yahweh Yahweh Shai. Okay? So you're committing spiritual adultery when you take it that micro see it. Right? It says, the saints shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented. Okay. With fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, because the angels are going to be present. When you read Daniel 12 verse 1, it tells you that even Michael is going to be there. Okay in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. And who's the lamb? Yahweh Shai is the lamb, okay? We gotta remember 2000 years ago, Yahweh Shai did not come on the earth to bring dread and, and terror. Yahweh Shai came humble as a lamb. Like it tells you in um, Isaiah, uh, is it Isaiah the 53rd chapter? Okay. Uh, a sheep dumb before before her hearers or, or uh, dumb before her her shearers her shearers if I'm saying that correctly okay so So, 2,000 plus years ago, Yahweh Shai 
okay? He, he came as a lamb. So, you know, this time when he come back, he's coming back as a lion, okay? And the proof of that is Isaiah 65, 14. Okay, the slain of the Lord shall be many. So Yahweh Shai is going to be is going to be present during the nuclear fallout that's going to happen when 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 World War Three escalates into a nuclear war. Okay, Yahweh Shai is going to be present, and you know why he's going to be present? Not only to bring judgment, but deliverance. Okay, salvation to the Israelites that are of the elect that did not take the micro see here. That did not take the micro see here. Okay. So you shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name so there you go and the time is drawing near where they're going to make this micro c hip mandatory So, you know, pretty much that concludes this lesson. I pray and hope that you sincere brothers and few sisters have been edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai. With that, I'm going to say Shalom. It's on to the next one.